Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. Thank you for tuning in. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I hope that if you enjoy this video that you will give me a thumbs up and click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you've been following along on this a really fun journey I've been on for the last several, several weeks, um, thank you. I know a bunch of you are starting to actually do this project, so I should apologize ahead of time for how scattered I have been. Um, this project came about uh, a few months ago. I was working on a altered book uh, keepsake journal, and I've done a couple of these. This one I had just done a flip through and then I followed it up with a tutorial series on how to construct something like this, but with a different book. So that's how this current project kind of came about. Several reasons. One is when you do these altered books with these uh, Reader's Digest, old Reader's Digest books, you end up tearing out a lot of pages. And I had stacks and stacks of book page that I'm kind of acquiring now that I need to use up. So I thought for my next project, it would be fun to do um, a junk journal of some type where the only thing I could use were uh, for paper with book pages. And that way it would make me be creative and I couldn't use any paper packs, no digi kits, nothing like that. I had to come up with everything from scratch. So that was my first challenge to myself. And then when I did this uh, flip through of this journal, I had so many requests for what paper pack this is. And sadly, it is a paper pack from Kane Company that has been discontinued for a very long time. I have searched everywhere for it. Um, I used these papers for my cards for my jewelry um, packaging and they were no more. So I needed to come up with new packaging, all kinds of things. So I thought, well, I kind of made half a joke about make, making my own mixed media papers in these bright colors. And so that was kind of the only other idea that I had for what my next project was going to be. Well, somebody in the meantime had asked if I would do a another tutorial on a stacked envelope junk journal. My very, very first um, attempt at any kind of junk journaling paper craft was this project, uh, which is what kind of got me started maybe even doing this channel. Um, when I did this book. I never even finished it and there were just lots of issues with it. Uh, I keep it around because it reminds me of how far I've come and I just, you know, someday maybe I'll finish it. But for now, it's just kind of a very beginning for me. So it's a stacked envelope junk journal with file folder. When I did this one, uh, I didn't really like how it went together. So I came up with some ideas of how to do it a little easier. I've made two more since then. And there are videos of those two journals. I, I'm not sure if I have tutorials or just flip throughs, but I'll put the links in the description for you so you can go back and, and see them because they're all a little bit different. Those were done with paper packs. Um, so they are pretty much a, a theme throughout. And those I actually constructed by totally decorating the envelopes and everything before I attach them to the file folder. So that's why I'm mentioning it because there's more than one way to do things. And as I, the more I do, the more I learn little tips and things that I like to make things easier. So today I'm going to kind of go through just the build and construct of any basic uh, file folder, stacked envelope, junk journal with a few changes, even from the last one that I did. So the current series that I have, and I'm going to call this today's video a prequel to this uh, series. The reason is I did a build and construct video for this one, and somebody gave me a comment uh, today that I had neglected to black out my address. And so on all these recycled envelopes from the tutorial, my address is out there, and which kind of freaked me out a little bit. So I've taken that video off. And I'm doing this one today as how I constructed this video because there are people who are watching this series that have started already. And there are some that, you know, maybe want to start once they kind of see how this is working out. So I'm going to do a tutorial on putting this one together. Obviously, I can't take this one apart. So we're going to start with new, new materials. 
but I'm going to show you how you can construct this. Now, the, the other good thing about me having to do this is when I started this project, I had no theme in mind, nothing, a blank slate. So when I built the original journal, I didn't know where it was going to go. And I ended up halfway through totally ripping off the file folder part of my journal because I had this idea that I wanted to create an old carpet bag inspired um, more of a case that I can put um, souvenirs and, you know, scrapbooks or whatever inside of this. So I'm, I'm not to what I'm not to the point where I'm put what. I have finished what's going inside, so I'm not gonna show any of that. And I have a tutorial on from this point when I made this back cover. So I'm not gonna go over this today. Instead, I'm gonna show you, focus on how to put the envelope portion together, and then you can attach it to a file folder and I'll have one ready, but I'm gonna even do a little bit different than the other two that I've done. So my original one, and the two following it were just in this uh, kind of a book style where I was just gonna do kind of an art, this is mixed media paper in it, and it was just gonna be kind of an art journal. And then it has the two pockets for the file folders on the top. That's how I started out this one. And then I ripped all that off because I wanted to do the carpet bag inspired uh, cover. So today what I'm gonna show you is even a little bit different from both of those. So I'll set those aside for a minute. Um, to start, all you need is a file folder. This was a file folder, and I've already cut the little tabs off. My very first one, I left the tabs on because I wanted to see that it was a file folder. Um, but the ones that I've made after that, I kind of like it looking just like a book. So I've cut that off. If you, When you take your file folder, if you kind of look where the little notched part is, that's kind of where I decide I need at least, at least that much trimmed off. And then what I did was... Um, make an even round number here at this dimension, which turned out to be eight inches for me. So you do that. And then if you want to do that um, one at the top where I just have notched out the little pocket, all you have to do is fold that file folder in half and then crease that down. And then you have your booklet part started. So I'm not going to do that one today. I do want to make another little change to mine. So what I did was I grabbed my scoreboard. Now I've dropped my score tool. Okay, so a scoreboard, if you're brand new to um, junk journaling and all of paper craft kind of thing, it's a board um, a lot with little ridges at every, I think, eight inch on this one. Um, this one's from Martha Stewart. There's many different brands, I'm sure. Um, but it came with a little tool, this, and then a little door thing that flips up. And the thing that you use these for, besides just making the simple score I'm going to do today, is there are dimensions on here for standard size card sizes um, so that you can make your own cards, uh, just a regular, gate, uh, regular folded card. Um, you can do a gatefold card. Then it also has uh, in dimensions for different size boxes. And then a tool, a corner tool that helps you to create um, envelopes. So it's really a handy tool to have if you don't have one and if you're gonna be card making, it's a necessity, I would think. Um, but I, I believe I may have already done a tutorial on how to use this. So I can put that in the link to where I've actually shown all the different envelopes and boxes and things it makes. But today I'm gonna to just use it to make my spine for my book. I'm still using a file folder, but I decided for this one, I wanted to leave a little bit of a spine at the back so that I can include more than one signature. Now, if you are brand new to this, and when I was, I did not know what a signature was. And I've seen other people in comments of things, you know, wonder what that is. So basically, if you take a piece of paper and you fold it in half, so this was, this is some mixed media paper to do an art journal. You fold it in half and that's a folio. And then if you take multiple folios, in this case I have three, I put those together and it made a signature. And then when you take all those signatures and put them together, you've created your book. So this one is probably bigger than I would make for here, but as you can see, I can have this be just a nice little book. So to make your, um, 
some score marks for this. Um, because I had went, when I cut my folder, uh, I wanted it as big as I could make it, but I wanted it a rounded number. So like I said, I, I have it eight inches high. I went ahead and I made it 11 and a half uh, wide, just to give me a round number. And then I just found the center. So the center of 11 and a half is five and three quarters. Now, if you don't like doing math and measuring and all that kind of adding and all that uh, fractions, then just, you know that five and five is 10. So that extra 11 would be another half inch would be half of that. And then that extra half, 11 and a half, go a quarter inch. So that takes you to five and three quarters. So that's kind of the, the easy way to find the center. And then just go out one increment at a time till you get the width of the spine that you want. In my case, I decided half an inch looked good. So I've made my score marks at five and a half and then at six. So if your fly folder ends up 11 and a half wide by eight high, you would make your score marks five and a half and six inches. So when you do that, you, you just run this little tool through that groove and it'll make your score mark. And then just to make it easy for me, I flipped it over and did it on the other side too so that I would get a nice crease. And that way I, can, I could fold it either way. So I've made my fold. You wanna be really careful because it's a pocket, you have double thickness to make sure that your edges are lined up so that your book doesn't end up kind of wonky. And then just crease those down really well. See how that wants to fall over? You wanna just make sure you get it really lined up and creased. Okay, so then for mine, I decided instead of having my pockets from the top, I wanted to make some angled pockets. So to do that, I just opened up my file folder. And now I can't fo fold it in half this way. You could if you were doing just this, this simple folded one, but I'm not doing that. So I have to be careful and mindful of this spine. So I'm gonna make sure that this edge is all uh, lined up together and then make my angled cut. And then that way, when I close it back up, I have the same angles on both sides. Okay, so that is that. Now, the next thing you wanna think about for this, now you may not be doing the challenge that I'm doing. I'm gonna set this scoreboard. Aside. If you're doing the book, uh, recycled book page challenge like I am, when I started, I didn't have a theme or know what I was gonna do and I had to create all my papers. So I just went ahead and left my file folder plain and then I did go ahead and inked all my edges because I like to do that ahead. And then if you're going to do, maybe yours is with a digi kit or a, a paper pack. And I should say, if I didn't know what digi kits were, that's digital kits that you can purchase from different people on Etsy or places like that. I think mostly Etsy. But you, they'll, they'll print digital, uh, they'll sell digital download kits of paper packs that they've created. And then you pay whatever it is and you download them and print them out yourself at home. So, or you can take them to a, a printer, I guess, and, and on a flash drive or something. But anyway, you print those out and then you use those papers for your journal. So depending on what you're gonna do, you'll decide if you wanna go ahead and decorate your file folder portion or not. By that I mean, you know, lining with papers and that kind of thing. So think about that. And then also you want to think about your closure. Um, on a, I'll use this first one because I think my new one's gonna sit on a, a shelf open because it's getting so thick. Um, on this one, I did a tie that tied the envelopes down together. And then I did another tie on the book portion. That way they're independent of each other. You can leave the book tied and then be, you know, doing things in here. So decide what you want to do for a closure. Maybe you're doing a belt buckle sort of thing or you know something else. You, you need to think about that ahead of time because you want to bury any ends of ribbons or anything into your file folder that you're not going to see. So like in this case, it was you could you could put that in before you glue or stitch the sides uh, or depending on what you decide to do, 
you can, if you're gonna put decorative paper, you can glue it to the top of here and then it'll be covered with paper or you can do it to the outside, either way. If you were gonna leave this blank um, and not decorated, say you just wanna leave it plain file folder, then obviously you wouldn't want your ribbon here, you'd want it on th this side. So this is your front, your back, you know, your envelopes are gonna be here. So you wanna think about that and attach those at, at whatever point uh, before you put your papers on. Okay, so let's imagine that we have all of that done on this one. So the next thing you need to do, and this is also where I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. On the previous ones that I made, I took my file or my envelopes and I used six. I wouldn't use more than six, you could use less. Um, and you're gonna do three on each side or whatever number you would decide. And they're gonna be attached to the front of your file folder. When I did them before, I would just glue those right down to my folder. And it's it feels backwards in a way, I think, for some people because your top envelope actually goes down first because of the way the flaps are. You're using the flap of the envelope. And that kind of, sometimes it's hard to wrap your brain around, it's backwards. But that's how that worked. Um, for this one, I'm gonna do it just a tiny bit different. Normally, those would be attached here and then everything gets decorated, and your last thing you do is put your decorative thing here. We're gonna imagine that's a decorated piece there. Okay, when I did my last, the one I'm working on now, I ended up ripping all this off because I changed my mind. So I've kind of thought, well, you know, if I'm gonna do this last part anyway, maybe I just focus on this and attach it attach them to that decorative piece, and then attach the whole thing to my file folder. So either way, I mean, it's just a different way to try it. I, I like to experiment, so we're gonna see what I end up liking the most. But on some of them, I actually, uh, the two ones that I did as gifts, I actually completely um, decorated the envelopes and did all the inserts and everything before I put it together. And the one I'm currently working on I put it together first because I didn't know what the, the plan was. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one too because I don't know the plan for this one either and I need to do this demo. So I started out then with this piece, which I in this case I just used some cardstock. You could use you know half a file folder or whatever you have laying around or your decorative paper. If you're gonna use decorative cardstock and you already know which piece that you want that back to be, you can use that. So the only thing that I want to point out is I made mine eight inches, the same eight inch height of my book, but then I made it a quarter inch narrower. And the reason that I did that, and I'm hoping a quarter inch is enough, I may need to do a little bit more, um, is by the time you have uh, reinforced your envelopes, which I'm gonna show you all that, you've already built up a little bit of bulk, the way those stack into each other, and you want them to fit if you're gonna use this first, you want them to end up fitting within the width of your book, okay? So I just think a quarter, knocking a quarter inch off of that is a good amount because it's gonna give me a little bit of an offset there. So that's what I did and we're gonna hope that, hope that works. Okay, so the, the first thing you wanna to do to your envelopes, um, get six envelopes, three on one side, three on the other, and we'll just focus on one side for a second here. I've already prepped these because I, I'm not good at crafting in front of the camera. I'm just too slow and messy. So you wanna do different size envelopes. I didn't really have as many variety of sizes as I wished I did right now. Um, thank you card size are really cute to do in the front. Um, little uh, florist cards that size, those are cute. Um, just anything, but you can take any size envelope and cut it down to maybe the size that you want, depending on the shape. So the other thing that I like to do is each one I want to open at a different spot. So one of these, let's see, this one is going to open from this side. Uh, and it was an envelope that, you know, was like this, a card. Here was the opening. I'm making the opening here. So I can cut it any width that I want now. 
I just want to stay within the width of my book. So I like to just stagger things. So I've made this one a little narrower than the other one. And this one is going to open at the top. Okay, so you can see this is my envelope with a flap. And this is the bottom of the envelope. I just cut the side. So again, you can make this any height that you want based on where you cut it. So these two I've chosen to do that way. And then this was just a long, skinny, actually a window envelope. You can see a tiny bit of the window left here. Now, if you want to leave your windows in, so say your window was down here, and use that as an element in your envelope, leaving it open where you can peek through this, what's inside, you could do that. So I've actually done that on my one of my very first ones I did, and I just cut around. That's what is it here? Let's see. I know I did. Oh, here, this one. So you can see I left my little window in there, and when I did my decorative little collage paper around, I just worked around that, that little opening. But then you want to make sure you do a pretty paper that you see through there or whatever card you put inside. So that's one idea. The other thing is you can um, do these angled ones like I did. So I cut just the angle on the front. You could cut the angle away from here too. And I've done that on one for the other side that I'll show you. So it, it's just, you know, whatever you choose to do. So this way I'll put a card or something in this, in here. Okay, so that was one side. So you wanna get all of your cuts the way you want, have them kind of laid out. And then for the other side, let's see what I did here. I did one again along the side. This was a skinny envelope that I just did along the top and I made it a little bit shorter. And then this was just a scrap of envelope that I had from one that I had cut and used this way, you know, on the other side. So I just had this little piece and I had saved it. So it just makes a cute little pocket and I had cut it both sides. So it's just going to be like this. And then I can, I can make another little envelope or something that sticks inside there. So those are my six. So then the next thing that I learned from uh, not doing it the first time is when you're working with just a thin envelope, you, you're using the flap to glue it down uh, to your file folder. And if you only have that thin little uh, paper of an envelope, then that's not very much strength. And you're gonna be adding liner paper, you're gonna be adding decorative paper, you're gonna be putting cards in and out, and this will start to tear if you don't reinforce it. So someone had mentioned to me, I had tried a few different things. Um, I had tried just using gluing book page so that I would see that, or some decorative paper, which is again, just another thin paper. Someone had mentioned Tyvek tape to me, so I asked my husband to pick me up some, and this is what he brought, which is um, not what I exactly was thinking Tyvek tape was. It's really thin, this one's just Lowe's brand, um, but it's, I think they call it like sheeting tape or something like that, uh, but I can't find where the beginning is. It's super duper sticky. I mean, look at that, I can hardly get that off. It's really sticky and it's really thin. So I, that's kind of nice, but it's also very glossy. And uh, fortunately it's white down the center, which is okay because I don't want to see lows on there. So I've tried this. Um, this will be the first time I went ahead and put a piece on here, but I like inking my edges and I just don't think inking is going to stick to that. It's gonna just come right off, I think. We'll see but I, I will try it. So I've, I've put a piece to reinforce that. And then I went ahead because this is a corner pocket, that's always a vulnerable spot. The other tape that I already had picked up uh, that I thought I'd try is, it's funny because it's called easy tear and I don't want it to tear, but I think it's just easy to tear off of the roll. It, it seems like it's gonna be pretty sturdy. It's also very sticky, but not as sticky as the Lowe's tape. So it's a little easier to work with. It's a little thicker um, tape, but I like that it's brown already uh, because for mostly what I do, having that edge little thing peek through will be fine with me. At least it's a solid color. So I'm gonna try this. This is Duck Brand Easy Tear. I got it in the uh, at Walmart where all the shipping um, boxes and bubble wrap and stuff is. So that's 
um, a tape that I'm also trying. I'm using it a little bit more. I've used it uh, until I found something else I'll share with you. Uh, so it's a little thicker, but I think it's gonna be sturdy and I think I'll like the color of it. So I went ahead and I just did a strip down each envelope and then you wanna crease that down really well also. Okay, so that's one side. And then I remembered something that I had. Uh, let's see if I can find it. package. I recently made my own um, stickers for my packaging for I make jewelry and do knitting and have an Etsy shop and a website and all that kind of stuff. So I had bought this to do to make my own stickers. And it's um, vinyl sticker paper for printers. Um, Me Couleur is the, uh, I don't know how you say that, but anyway, the brand. I ordered it online. But it, um, it's, you know, a good thickness. It's a little thinner than that tape. And I have a little scrap somewhere over here. So when I made my stickers, I did them on my Cricut. And if you know how Cricut works, when you do a print and cut, you waste some paper. And so I didn't want to waste this sticker paper. So I had saved little scraps of it um, that I was going to use in my junk journaling. And so I thought, oh, that'll be perfect because it's thin. It's durable because it's vinyl, but it, this one happens to be like craft paper. So again, it's a color, a neutral thing. And I think that if I add my inking to it, I need ink on here for one thing, but I think if I add my Distress Oxide, see, it'll actually do something. So I'm thinking this might be the ticket for me because I happen to have it. So that's what I'm tried to use here on the other side. And it is nice. It's a little thinner than that easy tear tape, uh, which will be a good thing because you don't, you, I tend to bulk up my books way too much. So any thinness I can add is better. So I've done the tape on both sides. And now the next thing I need to do is I want to line the inside of my envelopes before I start attaching them because it's much easier when they're open. So because I'm trying to use that book page, I just t take a pile of book page. And normally, um, depending on the envelope, you could only line the front. On some of them I did, um, all right, the back rather. You don't need to, if this was solid color inside, which in my case it wasn't, it was patterned, I could have just left this and just put paper on the back side. The reason you need to do that is you want this em envelope to end up being closed and you're going to decorate this back side, but where your envelope is open, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So if I did not cover that, I would see the back side of the inside of my envelope and it's not pretty. So you want to put some kind of liner paper in there. So I just stuck a piece of book page in mine and then trimmed it off at the top. And I use glue stick to, I just use this Elmer's uh, Washable School glue stick. This is my favorite. I've now tried Scotch brand. Um, it was recommended to me. It's a little wetter than this. And for this type of thing, I like to use a dryer glue so that you don't get any rippling, especially when you're working with old book paper because it really soaks up everything and you get uh, really wobbly paper. So I like to use dryer glue. I've also tried um, this Scholastic because that's all they had at the time I was out and I didn't like this at all. So I've got it, I'll use it for some things, but um, it was, I still like the um, Elmer's the best for me, for where I live. And I'm in a very dry climate, so um, you may be in a humid climate, it does not work as well for you, I don't, I, mean, I don't know about that. So uh, when I do this also, I like to leave uh, extra, I don't need to cut it off at the seam because again, that's just one more layer of reinforcement for my, uh, for my edge. So I went ahead and left that long. Now I did go ahead because like I said, this was a printed on the inside. So I went ahead and put uh, another decorative piece. And then you can see, because this was just my cut edge of my envelope, I went ahead and just wrapped it over a little bit and that gives me a nice finished edge. So this one is just the the cut. So you do that to all of your envelopes. And let's see. So this one, you can see I left the white because that looks, it's all solid. It's nothing colorful or printed. 
So I left that, but then I did put the book page on the inside of the back. And again, uh, where it hung over, I left that, and I actually glued that down on this one so you can see. So that makes me have a pocket already. So that's two. Um, this one I think I also did just, now this is what I mean about the back. If I would not have put this liner paper, you would see that gap. Even though I have this decorative, you would see white and then my gap to my back side of my other paper. So if you want a clean look, then you just add that in. Now, it, it, I do recommend that you just use thin paper, like book page works well. Um, you know, just regular scrapbook paper that's not cardstock weight. You really don't want to add cardstock weight papers to these for liners because you're going to probably be using that for cards that go inside or uh, maybe your decorative paper happens to be thicker. So you want to keep it as thin as possible. So book page works well because it's just on the inside and it's a great way to use it up. And then this side I did, let's see. Yeah, again, I didn't do the front. I did just the back. And this one I haven't glued down so it's still open, but what I'll do is I'll just glue that down so that it's closed. Okay, so that's one. And then this one again, I just did. Now see, this is what I mean about that it has a print on the inside. So I can decide if I care about that or not. I don't think I really care. Right, so I just did that one. But you can see if you didn't want to see whatever that was, this is neutral enough, it doesn't bother me. So I love that one. And then this was my little tiny one. And I went ahead, again, it was just such a fragile little piece that I, I had to do it on the back, obviously. And then I went ahead and did it on the front too, just for extra strength. And I did add my tape there too. So I can glue these flaps together also for my pocket. Okay, so we have all of those are ready now to go. So at this point, I can go ahead and attach them. Um, sometimes I like to go ahead and do my inking, you know, before they're attached, it might be easier. I'm not gonna bother doing that right now because I want to show you how these all go together. So I'll just have to do that later. Um, so I have my eight inch by five and a quarter, and I'm just gonna kind of dry fit all of these just to see, and I like to stagger them. Let's see how do I have these. I wanna kinda of just dry fit everything before I glue anything down to decide where I want them to go. So maybe that one there. And this one at the top. This one's from the side, let's see. And they're gonna alternate. I'm kind of stacking them all at once, but maybe I should do that. So if I did that one, is that a top or a side? Yeah, I like that it's a top one and this one's from the side. So maybe I have those together or I could have them staggered like that. Oh, I just thought of one thing I want to do before I do that. This is an important thing too. It's easier to do this now. If you want to make a notch on anything, which I do, I don't need one on this one. I want to make those first because it'll just be easier. So this one is opening from the side. So I want to make a notch and I can do that anywhere I want. I usually kind of do them in the middle, but it might be fun to do it at the top. So just pick a spot and then make your little notch. Now you could just notch the front and not notch the back, but it's it's easier to do both. So I've notched that one. This one opens from the top. I do wanna notch that one and I'll do that one in the center. So I'm just eyeballing it. This, this punch that I'm using is a two inch circle punch. You could use any size you want, but that's what I have. Okay, 
And then this side, I'll notch. I kind of liked that notching at the top thing. So do that one. Okay. I almost forgot that would have been not good. Okay. So back to where they're going to go here. Let's see. I kind of like that one low since it has a notch. We'll do that one high. Decisions, decisions. Okay, something like that. Okay, so you kind of have where you want them, and now you just want to make sure that it's going to fit because, again, you've added already some bulk into those edges with tape and stuff. So I want to make sure it's going to fit within my cover, and it looks like it's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to attach them to that back card that I did. So if you flip it over, it's probably the easiest thing to do. And then you can use glue stick, or I think in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and use my art glitter glue. I just started using this. Um, prior to this, I was using Mod Podge that I would paint on with a paintbrush. Uh, and, and that worked fine for me. I'm in a real dry climate, like I said. Um, I understand collage podge, some people prefer. This art glitter glue is amazing. It's uh, very dry, sticky, sticky, sticky. It dries fast, and I find that it's so uh, light going on with that squishy little, or that little top that, um, it doesn't bubble, you know, it doesn't get too wet and bubble everything up. So then I'm just going to go to my next one. I think this is going to be easier in a way, flipping it over like this, um, because trying to tell people to, you know, the top envelope is really the one you need to put down first. It's hard to wrap your head around. It's like driving, uh, trying to drive backwards, you know. I can never back a trailer. Some people are very good at that. I'm not. So it's kind of like the same thing for me. My brain doesn't maybe comprehend that backwards thing. So I'm just going to put this last one. And all this is going to get covered up and buried. It's all going to get glued to your uh, file folder anyway. So, you know, it's all going to get stuck again. But see, now I have nice, clean edges. You know, it's kind of cute that I have this that wraps around to this book page. Don't know what theme this one's going to be, but I might end up having that. Or, you know, I can ink it. I can actually, if I want, put um, that brown tape there too. But I kind of think that's cute. So let's make sure I didn't get off here. Off my page. Okay, and then I'll do this side. So again, I'm just going to do the last one first. First one last. Backwards, me thinking backwards. And then the next one. I'll be happy if this one comes out as easy as I think it's going to be. Um, like I said, every time I make it, I make them a little different. And so you might, you might do like I did. I watched a tutorial for my first one, but I think it was her first time doing it too. And so, you know, you, you kind of learn as you, the more times you do something. I see, I don't need all of that bulk in there. I'm kind of half wondering if I want to tear a piece out. Oh, well, I want my pen. It's funny, I had um, Cindy, you know who you are. She's always giving me great 
tips because she's been doing this for years and years and she hadn't mentioned she'd mentioned different glues different things to try different papers um to try and she when i i posted that i had done I had mentioned this in my last video, I guess, the art glitter. And she's like, oh, I never told you about it because you seem to be so happy with Mod Podge. And I am happy with Mod Podge. It's good. But, you know, you, you see, I hadn't been watching other people's videos for a while. And we took a little road trip. And so I, I was bored and I did. And it was good because it kind of, you know, learned new things. And everybody was using this art glitter glue. So I thought I have to try that. So I do really like it. So now I've been hooked again on something else. Okay, so that is our, our basic um, stacked envelope portion. So you could actually make this, you know, say you just put a decorative something here and just have it be a cute little folio. I mean, that's cute to me. That would be fun. So I could just put um, two ribbons here and then collage the back of this or decorate it. And then that's it. That could be a done book and you don't even need the file folder part. But, you know, I want to try this too. So what would happen is you would just then glue this whole thing down when you have your file folder ready to do. And then you have your kind of file folder stack envelope junk journal, right? So I hope that um, I didn't make that too complicated. Um, and that you enjoyed this video and that you want to try this. So um, happy making. Uh, now, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.